I actually had no intention of studying computer science. I saw the science building, I said, miss me. High school's over, I will never take a science or math class again. Hey everyone, what's up? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, we will be talking about why you, yes, you, should learn how to code and I'm gonna give you resources on how you can get started. I am so passionate about this topic because I think there's this misconception that in order to get into computer science or learn how to start coding, you have to be a certain type of person or that it's a very exclusive community, which is totally not true. And I see so many videos on YouTube where people who are describing why you should learn how to code and always starts off with, you will never be without a job and you are gonna make tons of money. <laughs> which are important things. Financial security and job security, definitely things that are super important. But I think that there are better reasons that go beyond that of why you should start coding. Overall, learning how to code will make you a better problem solver. It will make you more creative. It will allow you to solve and find solutions to your own real world problems. And lastly, it's just so important to know because we live in such a digital age um, that's only advancing. So stay tuned to the end of the video to hear more about these reasons as well as the resources that I'll give you to learn how to start coding today. So when I got to college, I actually had no intention of studying computer science. I saw the science building, I said, miss me. High school's over, I will never take a science or math class again. And my original intent was to be a lawyer and I still wanna do law. But the reason why I took my first comp sci class was because naturally, you know, you grow one on Google and I searched up what major performs the best on the LSAT. And the first one was computer science. So I wanted that 180 went and took my computer science class and I didn't know that I was going to fall in love with it. I ended up falling in love with it and I'm so grateful that I took that class because ultimately computer science and learning how to code allowed me to understand how to solve problems and that there's not just one way to solve problems. It made me a much better problem solver, a much better creative. You used to put a problem in front of me I would be so scared, like all the thoughts would be running through my mind like what is going on, how do I solve this? But ever since I've took those computer science classes, it really has got me to understand that in order for you to learn how to solve a problem and a solution, failure is inevitable and it gets you really comfortable with failing and with things not working. And when things don't work, you learn how to tinker and ask yourself different questions. And I believe that everyone should learn how to code because it really allows you to become a much better problem solver or much better creative. There are people who I know have learned how to code with no experience and they were doing it just to solve a problem that they wanted to solve. For example, I know someone that they love to budget, but they didn't like what other budget apps were offering up there. So they made their own budgeting app with no experience. So learning how to code would really allow you to be a better problem solver and a better creative and it equips you with the skills to then solve your own problems. There is this quote that I tell people all the time who are hesitant to code and I read this somewhere online and it says everyone should learn how to read and write but that does not mean you have to become an author. Everyone should learn how to solve math problems but that does not mean you have to become a mathematician. And everyone should learn how to code but that does not mean you have to be a computer scientist. And in the same way that reading and writing help you to question the world around you, help you to solve problems, coding is also able to do just that. We live in such a digital age. Technology is all around us, but it is so important for us to understand what is actually going on behind these systems. Like, how is it that you're watching this video right now? What's going on in the back end? How is it that you were able to watch that TikTok you watched 10 minutes ago? <laughs> how is it that we're able to communicate and text with our friends and loved ones? And when we're able to understand how those systems work, we're able to question exactly how those systems work. When you know how to code, you are gonna be able to now question these systems. Why does this app work the way it works? Why doesn't it work this way? And once we are able to question those things, we're gonna be able to not 
only create better products but more inclusive products products that actually serve humanity so it is so important to learn how to code so you can be able to understand the systems and the technology around you now i want to debunk some of the myths that deter people from learning how to code number one that you had to have started combing from the womb you have to be a mark zuckerberg get to create your own app your own empire no that is definitely not true i didn't learn how to start coding i had no experience when i took my first computer science class and i learned my first semester of my sophomore year and there was people in that class who were coding from the womb right and it was very nerve-wracking but someone once told me it doesn't matter about where you start if you look at a graph an x and y graph right it doesn't matter about where you start that point what matters is the slope and the trajectory so if you're putting in the work and you're working hard to understand for yourself not to please anyone else not to show up for anyone else but for yourself you will do well in it you will exceed in it so just remember it's not about where you start or the point what matters is the slope. The second myth is that there is no representation in jobs that require coding, which is false. That is not true. I'm a black woman in tech who majored in computer science. There are some of us, while there is a smaller population of people who are underrepresented in tech, they do exist. And the biggest deterrent for me when I started computer science was the fact that no one looked like me. I told you, I saw that science building, I said, peace. I said, bye, adios, it won't be me. It can't be me, right? And a big reason was because I never saw someone that looked like me. And because I didn't see someone that looked like me, I thought internally, maybe I'm not supposed to be here. But I want to tell you, if you are someone from an underrepresented background, that you deserve to be here and you can learn how to code, you can know how to do it, and don't let a lack of representation hinder you from following your dreams. The third and final myth is that there are not many resources to get started, which is also not true. Because we're in such a digital age, I believe that it's becoming even more accessible to learn how to code, and I'm going to give you some of those resources. The first resource that I would recommend is Free Code Camp. And Free Code Camp is an open source project made by a man who started coding when he was in his 30s with no experience and people in that community have just built it to be more robust and it has a bunch of different tutorials on how to start learning how to code and people with no experience who learn how to code from free code camp there's about 40,000 people who have then gone on to get jobs as software developers at companies like google and microsoft and other tech companies so i would definitely start with free code camp the second one i would recommend in the most popular is code academy so code academy what i like about it is that it has different tracks so there are different parts of computer science and data science that might interest you because you just have a particular interest let's say in finance or data visualization and it will really allow you to find out what languages are the best for you to learn in order to supplement what you already like the third and final one I would recommend, and I got this recommendation because I realized if I can go back again, what I would do is actually read children and teens books about how to learn how to start coding, which I know sounds crazy, like why would I read a children's book? But think of it like this, when you learn how to code, you want to build such a stable foundation. It's like building a house. When you lay, when you build a house, first you want to pour down the concrete. You want to make sure you know everything's stable to build on. Then you put the flooring and the walls and the, eventually the roof, right? And when you're coding, you want to learn how to have the basic 
fundamentals. You want to have strong fundamentals because everything builds on top of itself. And children's books are put very simply. So they're able to help you understand those fundamental concepts in a way that is not complex to you, which is so important. So I would actually start with reading a children's book and I actually will link one, one below. And this was written by a woman who also started coding later in her life as well and is now a developer advocate at Microsoft. It's a great book and I'll link it down below so you can also check that out if you're interested. Thank you so so much for watching my videos. It means the world to me. When I read the comments and see that my content helps you all, it really keeps me going. I hope this video inspired you to learn how to code. I better be seeing a Google tab open on this browser and talking about Code Academy because we are learning how to code today. That's what we are doing. And if you like this video, please comment, like, subscribe if you want to learn more about other tech content, productivity, lifestyle. I love creating videos on those topics and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching.